Askofu, Makarioki, Mumbi Baskin, Naibu wa Rais wa OVC, Professor Lucas Njenga, Mkuu wa Proximity Point, um, Kurgenzi wengine wa One Voice Consortium, uh, na watu wengi kutoka ugaibuni. I'm kidding, it's not going to be in so <laughs> It's in English. <laughs> But let me just finish that and say, now again, wengine hamjambo. Hamjambo. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, first and foremost, let me thank you, um, OVC team, for inviting me once again to your event. I am deeply honored to be here today in this groundbreaking ceremony. I like that word, groundbreaking, because it's... Uh, it's more than two things. And I want to send my appreciation to you for attending the Diaspora Investment Conference and for showing up in a big way. It's exciting for us because it was our first event as a State Department here at Capitol. Um, it was exciting to see that the people I usually visit out there in the diaspora, was ha I was happy to see them at home. And for... Um, the rest of the country and the rest of government to see the work that we do and to see my people and the people that I represent being here. So I felt very um, honored by your presence and I'm, I'm grateful that you showed up and you continue to support us. So, thank you. So this um, occasion is not just to launch our construction project. It is really a testament to the shared dedication of economic transformation by both the Kenyan diaspora, and this is something Prof. you said earlier, by both the Kenyan diaspora as aligned with the fifth administration bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Um, and really three things. It is both, or more than two things. It is engaging the diaspora, it is diaspora investment, and it is affordable housing. So it's that beautiful nexus between those three things. Um, and, it, and because of that, it gives me great joy then um, to note that Proximity Point, um, the economic development arm of OVC, has been at the forefront of channeling um, economic activities that unite the diaspora community and actively engage in transformative projects back home. I was remembering that a few months ago, um, I was at the launch of one of your other projects in Kitisuru. Um, to the members of OVC, your collective efforts have brought us to this juncture uh, as we embark on a journey that holds the promise of economic empowerment, uh, of social uplifting, and I want to say congratulations. I want to extend um, my heartfelt gratitude to each one of you for being an integral part the transformative journey really that we are taking as a country and we get to see this 1,000 affordable housing units um, being uh, began or the journey of that beginning today and we commit to a legacy of building um, not just housing but a future that resonates with hope, prosperity, unity and a shared, a shared future. As we celebrate today, I reiterate my call to the Kenyan diaspora that I made um, last week for diaspora to actively invest back home, and I see that you're doing that. The recently concluded diaspora investment conference provided valuable opportunities for diaspora investors to engage in projects back home and to contribute not just to the economic development and growth of this country, but for their own personal uh, and financial growth. We like to say invest at home, not because you have a patriotic duty to do so, but because it makes sense for you. Um, and I was going to say that through our nine-point mandate, the State Department has been at the forefront of initiatives that not just connect the diaspora with um, investments, but connect you with home and contribute significantly to economic development. Um, and today's engagement is one such, uh, one such uh, activity. Countries that have succeeded in engaging the diaspora um, and in getting into a working partnership and relationship with their diaspora have done well. I have in mind a number of countries. I have in mind Ireland, which 
might not be a very well-known story to many people, but Ireland was able to engage its diaspora at the turn of 2008-2009 when um, the world markets crashed and they were able to stave off the worst of that um, depression or, re or recession and have continued to engage their diaspora and leverage those who are in government, those who are in business, those who have succeeded in various places. And they leverage them, not just those of you who left home in your adulthood and still, and, and you say Seattle, who said Seattle? Someone said Seattle today, Seattle. They say Seattle, but every now and then we can hear that, you know, we can hear your, your mother tongue getting in the way. <laughs> so, so they don't just leverage those who are, who, who we can round off their English, their nearest mother tongue. They leverage those who've been gone four or five generations. They will speak of the Kennedys as being Irish. They will speak of Obama as being Irish. And they will leverage that. Um, and because they have managed to do that, they have succeeded. I found out that every so often, um, the president and cabinet will invite the diaspora who are CEOs and above, c suit and above, into a meeting and basically consult. Israel comes to mind. Israel has done well by leveraging its diaspora around the world, whether it's in financial services or militarily or otherwise. India is an example closer to whom, because in the very recent past, they were able to leverage their diaspora to build up. Let me ask a question before I move there. One of the things that you will hear Kenyans traveling to India the most for is what? Yes. Their medical infrastructure and their health facilities and that entire ecosystem was built by their diaspora. Which makes me pause and ask you, diaspora, and I have asked this question before, what will you be known for? What is the thing that we are going to point back and say the Kenyan diaspora built this in this country? In this country? What is the thing that they helped propel us from one point to the next? Are you going to take one value chain and run with it? Are you going to take, is it affordable housing? Is that the thing that diaspora is going to be known for? Is it going to be healthcare? What is the thing? I want you to think about that and, um, and let us know. Now, as I said earlier, the department remains committed to protecting, engaging, empowering, and prospering every Kenyan wherever they are, regardless of where they live. Every Kenyan diasporian, regardless of where they are, where they live. So we are here looking to cooperate with you, to collaborate with you, to ensure your prosperity and the prosperity of this great nation. Before I extend my sincere appreciation, this morning I was in a meeting with the Deputy President and uh, the outgoing ambassadors. Um, the ambassadors who are, we have, a new, we have a new bunch of ambassadors who are about to be commissioned out. Um, and one of the things he insisted on telling them, he said, I've sent you all to do two things. Well, it's more than two things. But his, his main thing is, I have sent you all to do two things. One, I've sent you all to grow trade between Kenya and the countries where I send you to. The second thing, I have sent you to serve the diaspora. And in particular, every one of you, every year, must let me know how they have grown their diaspora numbers. Now, I want to propose, now that it is clear that this government is behind you from the highest office, and now that we are already supporting the work that you do because we are aligned in terms of the projects that you're working on and what you're trying to do as government. Proximity point. One of the things that I'm tasked with doing, and I have said this, the next four, for the next three, four years, the focus of the State Department is four things. We have stabilized the consular issues. I think I have seen some of you at my mobile consular services. The calls from the airport in a panic that I don't have this or the other have reduced. I've only had two this week. 
Um, December used to be very dicey on diasporians. At least the time people arrive at the airport in their, in their diaspora to leave and they realize they're holding a dark blue passport that expired. Anyway, with Tonga or Mengine Badaya when uh, your bishop is not here and I can discipline you properly. But um, four things are what we're trying to do. We are asking diaspora to invest back home, diaspora investments. We are asking diaspora to be engaged in skills, knowledge, and technology transfer. We are asking diaspora to open up trade routes for our goods and services out there. And we are asking diaspora to find job opportunities for Kenyans abroad. Professor Njenga and your team. Is there a space within Proximity Point for you to consider recruitment and talent? And if you're able to help us figure out this question of diaspora jobs, you will have solved a huge problem for this country. And the president likes to say, whoever will solve that problem can have anything they ask for. I don't want to say exactly that. But uh, I want to leave that challenge with you. You are in the markets that need these opportunities. You are in the markets where people cannot find sufficient labor for one, two, three things. You know that we have the right talent back home. We have worked hard to connect recruitment companies at home with jobs abroad. It's clunky. It might not work very well. But you're sitting there, you see the opportunities. Why can't you organize yourselves to be able to help us line up the talent back home and make it an, a smooth, slick process? I invite you to partner with us on that. Now, I want to now extend my sincere appreciation to each one of you for being here and for being an integral part of the transformative journey of this country. Your dedication and involvement resonate with the spirit of the State Department's mandate um, and the State Department's mandate and the work that we do uh, here. And I ask that we work together to exemplify this power of collective action. As I conclude, from myself, from my team, part of whom are here, and a number of them are um, back in the office, I would like to wish every one of you a Merry Christmas. May this Christmas bring joy, peace, and abundance of love. And may your homes be filled with laughter, your hearts with gratitude. May you reflect on the real meaning of Christmas. And I wish you a prosperous, fantastic, 2024. Ago, and we opened uh, the finished apartments there 
and here we are breaking the grounds again and ready to go on. And very shortly, we'll be in Malindi uh, starting the proximity point city of return. We want to thank God uh, for the efforts and the commitments of the diaspora community. Thank you everybody for coming and leaving all, their, all your commitments. Uh, we want also to thank our president who is not able to be here of the One Voice Consortium, uh, Dr. Lobert uh, Shiori, uh, who has worked very hard to make this work. But more than that, we want to, st to thank uh, our national government, our president, uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, uh, for the efforts that he has put not only to create this state department, but also to give us the opportunity uh, to be felt and to engage uh, with this nation. We appreciate and Madam P.S. Uh, when you go back, uh, please uh, thank the President and the Deputy President and the Principal Cabinet Secretary for us, for supporting us and giving us this great opportunity. Thank you very much. Let's give our hand clap. This is a very exciting project. Um, because you see, it, it's at the nexus of, of two, at least two important elements of the fifth administration's priorities. It brings together the idea of diaspora investments, as you see here. Um, this particular diaspora group has broken ground on what are going to be 1,000 units of affordable housing. So you have two exciting elements here. You have diaspora investment and you have affordable housing. And at the State Department for Diaspora Affairs, we're in the middle of that, bringing together um, whatever government priorities we have um, and linking them to, uh, to our diaspora and mainstreaming the diaspora in the process of national development. So this is a great example of our diaspora taking up the call really to come back and build build home, to come back and invest back home um, and to be a part of the journey that we are on as a, as a nation. Right, so I mean, so we have, we've been working very hard as a government and throughout various uh, government agencies, whether it's the Ministry of Labor or uh, our Ministry of Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, to ensure that we are um, opening up opportunities for Kenyans to work abroad. And diasporians, even those who are long-term residents of other places, whether they're permanent residents, whether they're dual citizens or not, because Kenya is their home, you find that people still invest here. A number of these diasporians, for example, are uh, dual citizens in other places, um, but here they are breaking ground investing at home. So we have a lot of that um, element where we see people living far from home, but there are connections to home um, are still very strong, so they still uh, invest back home. A number of them want to retire here in Kenya, so that connection remains remains very, very clear. But increasingly what we are saying is this, that we don't want diasporians just to invest back home because we think it's their patriotic duty to do that, but we want them to invest here because it makes sense, because it's a safe place to invest, because this is a, the investment here can be profitable. Um, so our agenda as far as finding opportunities for Kenyans to work abroad is very much on track. Um, and this is something that we've been working on for some time now. Mm. Incentives exist, but probably the biggest incentive is that you get to have an opportunity to feed your family. Mm -hmm. You get to have an opportunity to have a job. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the most dignified thing or dignifying thing uh, for an able-bodied person is to be able to work uh, and feed your family and fend for your people and create a better future. Uh, this is a hustler nation. We want to give the hustlers a great opportunity to move up. Um, some of these opportunities are going to be found abroad. And so we want our people to go and experience the cultures abroad, to go and find those opportunities there. Absolutely.